Let's open up the Hasbro Epic Hero Series 4-inch figure of Moff Gideon. Villa Verikino. If it's Star Wars, we collect it. Hello there, thanks for visiting Villa Verikino. As a Star Wars collector, of course I have my favourite product lines that I am always trying to hunt down, like the Black Series and Vintage Collection lines by Hasbro, but I gotta say I'm always excited to just find anything new when I'm out hunting for Star Wars toys at my local store. And today I spotted some new Epic Hero Series figures from Hasbro. This is Wave 2 and we've got some really fun characters in this assortment. I picked up three of them today. Bo-Katan Kreese, Moff Gideon, which I have here, and Darth Maul. Now, of course, Series 1 came out earlier in the year, back around April, and I picked up a few figures at that time, and I thought they were really fun. Of course, they're not supposed to compete directly with the Vintage Collection line in terms of detail and articulation, but here in New Zealand, they retail for about a third of the cost, which is just fantastic for the wider Star Wars fan population, and of course, the younger fans that are perhaps picking up figures with their pocket money. So I think... This is a really welcome addition to the lineup of Star Wars toys available internationally. So I'm really excited to open this one up. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Coming up really soon, I'll take a closer look at the figure out of the packaging along with the accessory. But first, let's take a quick look at the backing card. The packaging style for the Epic Hero series backing card is really bright and vibrant, really stands out amongst the Star Wars figures at my local store. We've got a strong yellow and a blue color theme here with a yellow color behind the figure a blue corner at the top left and of course we've got a nice readable name plate here in yellow with a blue swish underneath really catches the eye we've got a nice clear easy to read star wars logo here and black with some really cool art of the character down the left side we've got moff gideon here as we see him in season three of the mandalorian where he's got that really sinister black beskar armor there with that really cool helmet there as well really nice artwork there and of course we've got a nice clear bubble here for the figure itself we can see the top half of the figure and the accessory included there the bottom half is a little bit hidden by the nameplate but it's nice and clear easy to read introducing younger fans to the characters now down the side of the bubble here we can see the actual line name here epic hero series and you can see that the height of the figure is noted here as well this is actually a four inch figure or as we can see there 10 centimeters these are slightly taller than the standard Star Wars action figures that we know and love, particularly the modern ones in the vintage collection, which are known as 3.75 inches. So these ones are a little bit taller. We've got the Disney and Hasbro logos there on the front. Overall, really nice and vibrant. On the back of the backing card, we have that same strong yellow and blue color scheme and a really nice product photography image here of the action figure with the included accessory. We have a short blue pair about the character, introducing it to younger fans. Clever and formidable, Imperial Moff Gideon is fiercely determined to capture the child known as Grogu. And of course, the back of the card has the barcode, a lot of copyright, all of that kind of stuff there on the back. So as a little bit of a comparison, I also have a standard vintage collection carded figure here. So you can see the difference in the packaging styles here. This one is larger. The figures here, you can see this one is a little bit on the larger scale when compared to the slightly smaller 3.75 inch figures and of course the accessories are going to be a little bit on the simpler side as well I, I just think this is quite fun I know that I'm probably not the target audience although they are both noted as being appropriate for ages four and up I think generally speaking the younger fans are going to gravitate towards this one with those bright colors the line art and of course that cheaper price point I could buy three of these for the price of this particular carded figure so even if you're not a young fan if you are on a limited collecting budget this is going to be a great option to populate your display space with a few cool Star Wars figures so that's a bit of a quick look at the packaging let's open up the figure so now I have the Moff Gideon action figure out of the packaging alongside the Electro Staff accessory. So let's get stuck in. So I'm really quite excited about this particular figure because this is the first figure of Moff Gideon in his season three outfit that I'm able to get my hands on. It hasn't yet come out in the vintage collection line. So this is quite cool. Kind of fun that it came out in the Epic Hero series line first for young fans. So of course we have his black and red outfit kind of inspired by 
Mandalorian armor. Of course, it's made out of Beskar. And because of the simple color palette, I'm hoping that the paint application will be quite good. So I want to start off quickly with the cape. It looks really nice. I like the sculpting lines here. Of course, it's plastic. It's not a soft goods cape. It does hit just above his ankles, so it's not going to stop him standing up nice and straight. Some plastic capes, if they hit uh, right there at the surface level, it can sort of tip them. But of course, this is going to be nice and easy for posing there. It does come off. It is attached with a peg. It's quite sturdily attached as well. We can see that nice circular peg. It's got quite a good depth there. And we've got a really nice red painted inner there. and Some really nice contrast there for the inside of the cape. Now, of course, a lot of the toys in this line have swappable accessories. So we've got a pretty standard peg hole in the back there because the capes and the jet packs and things like that are swappable between the characters add some really fun play features for younger fans. On the flip side of that we have some unfortunate peg holes elsewhere. On this particular figure we have a peg hole in the right forearm there. It's a little bit black on black, a little harder to see. Of course this particular figure doesn't come with a forearm accessory. That hole is for swapping with other figures. If you have some others then you can swap the accessories around which is fun if you're playing as a younger fan, you know, stealing accessories, kind of making up your own adventures. But because this one doesn't come with that, that is going to be a little bit of an eyesore for adult collectors. It's just kind of there looking like very much a toy play hole there and it's not on the left side thankfully no, nothing there but that is a little bit of a um an unfortunate feature really cool for younger fans though so let's go down at the rest of the figure so he's all black with just some small silver and red patent details so of course being all black plastic that means he's going to be pretty durable for play not a lot of painted surfaces to scratch off there it does look like we do actually have potentially I don't know if this is black plastic or it's just giving the illusion of a painted stripe here across the belt. Can't tell if perhaps they've layered the paint because we've got red, silver and black. It's a little hard to tell because of the gloss whether they've perhaps painted red and then painted a black strip there through the center and the silver. And I don't really want to scratch my toy to find out which one of those two it is but it looks really cool. That silver buckle is painted quite nicely and the red stripes are nice and straight, really sort of even. They don't look like sort of uh, hand painted wobbles and they do continue around to the back. I know sometimes some of these cheaper product lines designed for children sometimes they're a little bit light on the paint across the back of them uh, but this one has those red stripes going around the back and you can just see the red shoulder straps also continuing around to the back of the figure there and of course on the front we can see those shoulder straps. We have a silver iron heart here in the center of the Mandalorian style chest plate armor here. Very nice and that is the rest of it for the figure. Now the only rest of the color is here on the helmet. I love the helmet on this one. So sinister uh, with the red and black. We've got red in the visor and a stripe of red on each cheek there. Now we don't have too much sort of uh, sort of uh, room for error on this one. I'm really particular about the visors in particular on Mandalorian helmets because we don't have a human face. I really want the painting to be good on the helmets and you can really tell if it's a little bit off center to the sculpted details on helmets. So this one looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Everything lines up nicely with the painted details. That gloss black plastic looking really good and the red paint just kind of adding that really nice accessory detail there to it. So some really nice sculpted details when we look over the black. The detail is a little bit harder to see sometimes because it is black on black but we've got those little lines there on the chest. We've got some sculpted details here uh, towards the sort of center abdomen. Lots of little sculpting details, really detailed gauntlets with the unfortunate sort of notch there. We've even got a little bit of sort of a ribbed patterning here on the sort of the exposed undersuit and across the back. We've even got details that would be hidden completely by a cape or even a jetpack there with these sort of cord details there. The fact that the paint continues there on the back. We do actually even have a little bit of a hidden accessory here. It can't come out. It's completely sculpted on the leg, but we even have a holstered blaster there which is really quite nice. It's quite a good scale there. If we were to give a blaster to this figure, it would pr probably be a little bit on the larger side. So that's kind of fun having a small accessory sort of included there. 
got nice detail here on the knees. So of course I'm talking about nice detail. If I were to compare this with a vintage collection figure, which obviously doesn't exist yet, I can't do a direct comparison yet, they would probably look quite stark in contrast. But just for younger fans or for considering the price point as well, considering this is a third of the cost of a vintage collection figure for me here in New Zealand, I'm going to expect, you know, a little bit of a reduction in terms of the sculpted detail. But to be honest, this is looking pretty cool. I really like the details here. We can see we've even got some of the sculpted detail around the boots, the back of the knees. It's looking really good. So let's check out the articulation. So I'm expecting the helmet to turn side to side but I feel like this is actually on a bit of a ball uh, attachment point rather than just sort of twisting because I can kind of rotate it around a little bit. I've got up and down there so you can get a little bit of uh, sort of quirky character look there. A little bit more posability than simply turning it side to side like some of those vintage uh, figures. And of course we've got articulation at the shoulders. Just a simple sort of rotation they are just uh, giving me sort of a very uh, vintage figure vibes of course just being able to sort of move it in that one direction can swing all the way around <laughs> I'm not sure that I particularly want to and the legs are also just hinged at the hips I can go that far back in the back of course we're going to sort of hit on a few sculpted details there in the back and to the front I can get him to about that position, not quite sort of fully seated for say in a cockpit. He is leaning back there a little bit if I was to put him in a cockpit. I know there are some vehicles in the Epic Hero series line. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to source any of them in New Zealand yet. I am still on the hunt, but he can kind of sit down a little bit. It's a little bit of an awkward shape. But something that I really like that of course does really stand this figure apart compared to, you know, what Kenner was able to give Star Wars fans in the 70s and 80s is is the fact that it actually has a bit of a stance. When I think back to the Kenner figures, the arms were completely dead straight down by the sides and the legs were dead straight. So these uh, Epicurus series do actually have a bit of a pose built into it. We have a bend in the arms and we even have a bend in the, particularly in the left knee. He's kind of standing with a sort of a ready stance. Uh, this particular knee has a little bit of a bend in it. So he kind of looks like he's posed already, which is quite nice um, and it just look, gives a little bit more of a natural sort of uh, pose if you're going to hold an accessory with a little bit of a bend in the arm rather than having it straight down uh, by your side because as soon as you raise uh, an accessory out it just kind of looks kind of a little bit odd so having that little bit of a bend in the arm really helps out. Now we've got a classic sort of C grip here. A lot of the uh, accessories in this line are going to be staffs, lightsabers and blasters so that's all going to work really well with the grip here. So overall I think this is a pretty cool figure especially for the pre-tail price that I was able to uh, get this one for. I just think this is a lot of fun. He's a cool character. It's going to appeal to younger fans. You know you got to have your villains and your heroes to sort of have you know imaginary fights with there. You got to have your good guys and your bad guys and I think he looks really cool. I love the way that the red of the lining of the cape is sort of really showing through behind that black armor. He looks really sinister or the uh, sort of perfect bad guy action figure to put on your shelf or to have fights against the Mandalorian of course because he is available in this line. He looks really cool. You know like if I turn him just a little bit to the side I can't even see that peg hole in his gauntlet forearm there. He just looks pretty cool. Now of course if I was going to put him next to a vintage collection figure uh, you know he might not hold up but for considering that he's all black I think the sculpting works pretty well and I know for some fans that are particularly not as you know drawn to the really sort of fine points of articulation sometimes the articulation can really sort of get in the way of sculpted detail and kind of can uh, make them all good to pose sometimes when they've got almost too much articulation. It can take me a bit of time to sort of find a pose that I really like. Sometimes just sort of out of the box, one and done. You just want a figure standing on a bookshelf somewhere. This is kind of, you know, you get what you pay for. And if you just want a figure standing upright, then this will do fine. You don't really need too much of the sort of extra bells and whistles and features if you're not really going to use them. Now, of course, these figures are a little bit taller. So I just want to quickly grab 
have a vintage collection figure that I have on hand. This one is a recently released Mandalorian figure. This one is the Imperial base version. So this is the uh, Imperial jetpack version. So these two would actually be sort of the figures that would be fighting with one another. So you can see that the Moff Gideon figure is just a tiny bit taller. Him being a four inch scale figure and this Mandalorian figure is technically from the vintage collection line which is 3.75 inch. So this one is a little bit shorter but when I stand the two side by side you can barely tell and for a younger fan I don't think you'd even notice. So of course this one has a lot of painted details you can kind of see some of the articulation aspects to it. I'll have the full video of this one linked down below but you know if you've got some collectors or younger fans that just want to have sort of a placeholder a Moff Gideon figure for now it probably wouldn't look too bad amongst your figures. He's a little bit taller but then he does have spikes on his helmet so it works all kind of it does look pretty cool there. So of course this one is VC312A in case you're curious there just wanted to see those two side by side. So let's get him with his electro staff accessory in his hand so this i think this accessory is where things start to look a little bit more uh clearly aimed at a younger sort of a collector focus there the figure itself i think looks really good but i think when i put this accessory in his hand it's going to look a little bit more like a toy aimed at younger fans it's, it's a lot more simple than the accessories that we're used to seeing in the vintage collection line so it's made from a very sort of light gray not quite trans loosened sort of it's got sort of a little bit of a shimmer to it or something like that it's not a flat gray which I kind of like there it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it we've got some sculpted details there but overall it's a little bit simple we've got a little bit of sort of a purple uh, electro effect but it looks a little bit like a vine or something like that sort of wrapped around the end I kind of like it makes me think of it would look better if it had a separate sort of translucent electro effect and I think that that's how we will eventually get this accessory from the vintage collection line kind of like those extra removable sort of force lightning and things like that where it's kind of sculpted in a translucent plastic that's kind of put around a staff it's a really cool effect this one it's simply sculpted and then painted which is a little bit more simplistic and the overall scale of this is just a little bit thicker because of course when you're designing accessories for a younger fan it has to be easy to hold easy for the figure to hold and a little less losable so I find that you know uh, the accessories from the epic hero series tend to be a little bit more sort of bulked up in terms of the scale but I get the feeling he's going to hold it pretty well so let's see we'll pop this in his hand yep goes in really easily so because we can't rotate his hands or move much beyond just kind of moving him at the shoulders he is going to be a little bit more fixed in terms of his stances when holding the weapon there it's going to be sort of held out in front of him and I can't really sort of uh, rotate his hand around to really change that because he does have this is, I'm pretty sure his hands are fixed yeah unfortunately they don't rotate that would be one point of articulation I think that would really sort of just elevate it a little bit more <laughs> um, just because he kind of holds the staff out in front of him like that not too bad but it does does when I put the accessory in his hand gives him a little bit more of a really does feel like an epic hero series toy when I put the accessory in his hand whereas when he's not holding it he could he could almost pass for a, a vintage collection figure especially if I'm not looking at him too close if I put him in the back of my display shelf there so in terms of an accessory if I was to give him a dark saber accessory now this is a vintage collection one this one came with the minds of Mandalor Mandalorian figure I just want to see if he can actually hold an accessory here so it's oh it's just gonna sit in his hand because these are much thinner accessories so yeah that hand unfortunately is not going to hold it maybe he can hold it in this hand I can kind of get him to hold it so if I if this one unfortunately I thought it might have been fun if this one actually came with the dark saber so you can see if I put a vintage collection accessory in his hand he starts to look a little bit more like a vintage collection uh, figure there just in terms of the slender accessory it kind of adds to the illusion there but his hand has a much wider grip it's just balanced there I can take that out really easily so uh, of course I'm hoping to uh, get one of the figures that does have the dark saber so I can put that 
that in his hand because of course this uh, line is very good about swapping accessories within the Epic Hero series line. It's not really designed to mix and match with the vintage collection line there but he's really cool I have to say. Like the other figures that I opened up from series one it really just comes down to that peg hole. It's a play feature that I understand is there for the younger fans. I am not the target audience for this line. I know when the line originally came up a lot of collectors got upset but I want Hasbro to continue making Star Wars toys and if we're going to have the vintage collection continue on for years and decades to come we need younger fans coming up in the ranks uh, you know collecting Star Wars toys that are designed for them before they sort of migrate over to the you know sort of the vintage collection that are slightly more expensive and detailed figures out there and the fact that these ones are just a little bit larger scale I don't have huge hands but uh, these are they feel nice in the hand so I can imagine you know kids would be able to hold these play with them easily they're less prone to breaking because of the lack of articulation all of those fine little points that could be broken but these figures will actually actually not look too out of place alongside the vintage collection figures. So if they progress through sort of our collecting Star Wars figures they can have these ones and then go through to the uh, vintage collection ones. I think this is fun. Great way to introduce the hobby of Star Wars collecting to you know other fans because I think back to some of the toys that I was collecting when in my younger era not in the vintage collection sadly I was a little bit too young to be collecting those but you know in the prequel era we had a little bit more of a simpler action figure style before we really got to the vintage collection line like we do now with that fantastic level of detail and articulation. It's fun it just sort of it kind of takes me back to some of my childhood adventures with Star Wars action figures and of course these are a little bit more detailed I think when we think to some of the other lines that Hasbro does create for Star Wars fans. The retro collection those sort of replica Kenner figures those are sort of designed to be nostalgic for older fans but again they have that much more simplistic style. They have the straight arms, the straight legs, they're designed to look like the Kenner figures and I don't think that those would necessarily appeal to younger fans in terms of figures to play with. The features are a little bit more dumbed down almost too much by modern toy standards. I think those are really sort of a nostalgia piece, a nostalgia line for older collectors and of course the price point on those is not really sort of uh, kid friendly either. This is a fantastic toy line in terms of just a really nice balance of sort of interesting characters that kids will know predominantly from live action series on Disney Plus so very modern stories modern characters that young fans will immediately recognize like the Mandalorian and Grogu of course Moff Gideon appearing throughout the Mandalorian series young fans will know him and want to sort of play with him opposite the Mandalorian. We've got just a great price point lots of cool features in terms of accessories that you can swap around. I'm just really happy to see that Hasbro is not leaving out younger fans. I, I really want the, the hobby of Star Wars toy collecting to continue on strongly for years to come. So I like this kind of middle ground. You know a lot of fans uh, will be just a little too old for the Young Jedi Adventures toy line. I think it's really cute. I do collect it myself but I think this one's a really good middle ground before, before they get old enough to really dive into the vintage collection and then perhaps even Black Series as well. So this one was fun. I picked him up on sale because yeah I just wanted to check him out and see how he compares in terms of the details because I do actually quite like the Epic Hero series line. I like you know mixing around my Star Wars collectible lines. I have my focus ones, the ones that I will always collect and always love but I like experimenting to see what other toy lines are coming out and I quite like the Epic Hero series. Just a bit of fun, a lot cheaper to collect than vintage collection as well. So if you really just want to sort of add just a figure to put on a random bookshelf, put it by your computer or your workspace. It's great. You don't need to worry too much about spending too much about having a figure that you just want to put. Maybe you want to put a really cool toy on your desk in your office space you know or at work and you don't want to have an expensive figure there. Just something fun to sort of look at while you work and I think these ones work really well for that. So I'm going to add him to my growing collection of Epic Hero series figures and I think it's really cool. I can't wait to see what other figures are going to come out in the line next. So Thank you so much for hanging out with me today as I opened up another Star Wars action figure, checked out the details and had a lot of fun. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are in the galaxy and let's hang out again very soon for more Star Wars fun. May the force be with you.
If you're an Epic Hero series fan, I've also unboxed the Stormtrooper 4 inch figure. That video is linked here in case you haven't already seen it, as well as a whole Epic Hero series unboxing playlist. This is the way.